like to welcome you here to our show this afternoon on behalf of our sponsor. You know, we're one of the few remaining radio shows that's lucky enough to have a sponsor. So if you enjoy yourself during the next half hour, you could do us all a big favor, if you would. And that is, sometime this week, stop by your neighborhood RCA Victor dealer and pick up a 27-inch television set or a record player or something. Because we'd like to be working up here next year at the same time. Incidentally, this is the start of our third year for RCA. And of course, as you folks know, now Phil is out on his own. And one more thing I'd like to tell you, this year we're changing our time. It's going to be a big lineup on Friday night. Bob Hope followed by our show. So don't remember when you hear the show to tune in Friday night for Hope and Harris. So let's get Phil off to a big start on his new time. Back with Bob Hope. So let's give a big welcome to Mr. Phil Harris. <laughs> Now I want you to meet who 
whose fault it is, because without her, I don't think the program would be possible. I just want to, I don't want to go into a big eulogy. I just want to tell you that she's not only the most beautiful girl in the world, but this kid's got talent, too. Out of Spain! Out of Spain! And they, too, are two of the outstanding little actresses in our business. They've been with us ever since we started. We've watched them grow up. They're wonderful and just as clever as the Dickens. Janine Roos and Ann Whitfield. Come on. Here. They don't come too young for me. <laughs> women, I just... <laughs> I mean, you know you got all of me. <laughs> Here's a new fellow to our organization. We're very happy with him. The only thing I'm worried about is a little too handsome. That's the only thing, and young. But he's a marvelous actor, and I know you've seen a lot of his pictures lately on television. He's our new William, plays the part of Alice's brother, a wonderful performer, and a wonderful guy, John Hubbard, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Here's the little kid that steals our show every week, and we're very happy about it because we not only love him, but he is just chock full of talent. Plays the part of Julius Fabruzio, the grocery boy, Walter Tetler. Come on, Walter. <laughs> of course, the program wouldn't be complete without those four guys, and any time you see them build around the country, I want you to go see them. Take my word for it, it's the greatest act you've ever seen. Jackson's had them for many years on his cute commercials. We've had them ever since we started. We love them. The four sportsmen, ladies and gentlemen. And now, the one and only, Elliot Lewis. That's our cast, ladies and gentlemen. All I ask you to do this is our opening show. Please laugh. If you laugh, laugh loud. Or if you cry, cry loud. Everything you do, do it loud, will you please? I want to get in here again. Thank you, and have a good time. <clears throat> King Arthur had his shining nights. Cleopatra had her day. But you, you lucky people, you, you've got Harris and RCA. <laughs> RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents the Bill Harris Alice Faye Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, transcribed, written by Ed James and Phil Shukin, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, John Hubbard, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Tonight's little epic is entitled... The Courtship of Elliot Lewis, or A Drummer Gets Stuck with Any Old Girl, But a Guitarist Can Take His Pick. <laughs> and now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Fay and Phil Harris. Vacations, like everything else, must come to an end. Once again, it's breakfast time in the Harris household, and we find the Harrises, Alice and Phil, in vastly different moods. Alice is grumbling over a red-hot stove, but Phil is smiling and gay as he trips lightly down the stairs. A smile on his lips and a song in his boyish heart. Boyish. <laughs> Pretend you're normal when you ain't. <laughs> so for my bands had no complaints. Just call for Harris if you're all alone and find you own some cocktails for two. <laughs> I'm running all the way. Oh, bloody feet. Oh, hi, Alice, honey. Hi. Boy, that was some vacation we had, wasn't it? Vacation. I spent three months as a combination bellhop and bottle opener for you and that Elliot Lewis. <laughs> Some vacation. Oh, now, wait a minute, honey. It wasn't that bad. I remember one day we didn't see Elliot for almost a whole hour. 
Sure. But we had to hide in a cave. <laughs> Look, just for, forget about Elliot, honey. Don't worry about him. Hey, what do you got for breakfast? Well, you have your choice between three-minute eggshells and some southern fried coffee grounds. Gosh, that sounds... <laughs> Fried coffee grounds? That's all that's left, Clyde. Elliot got here first. You mean he was here for breakfast? His breakfast and everybody else's. Well, where's the lovable locust now? In the fruit bowl, diving for pears. Well, where's the paper, honey? Elliot ate it. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Alice. That's silly. He might have ate the sport page, but not the whole paper. Oh, this is getting serious, Phil. We've got to get rid of him. Look, Alice, I can't throw Elliot out into the street like an old arrangement of tiger rag. <laughs> he's my pal, and as long as I got a home, he's welcome. Nobody's going to throw him out. All right. Then you pay for the food he eats. <laughs> You mean out of my allowance? Out of your allowance. That deadbeat's got to go. <laughs> Why don't he dig up his own meal ticket like I did? <sighs> honey, that's it. Let's find a wife for Elliot. Oh, wife, honey. How crazy can you get? Who's going to stand for a guy with baggy pants and a wrinkled shirt and a three-day growth of beard and a... Hey, you know... He'd make a good husband. That's what I said. And it'll be good for Elliot's pride. He won't have to mooch off of no strangers. He can have a house of his own he can mooch in. And besides... <coughs> now, nah, it ain't gonna work. But why not? Honey, honey, we can show him how much he's missing. We'll show him how happy we are with one another. With our children. And our home. Darling... Darling, we'll show him the true meaning of love and contentment. Alice. Yes, Phil? Will you marry me? <laughs> I've got a license to prove I did. Now, look, you go to work on Elliot and sell him a bill of goods. Okay, baby, I'll call no, him. No, 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 you don't have to. I'll just light the stove. <laughs> Hi, Alice, what's cooking? Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, hi, Curly. You got up, huh? No, but I ought to be up any minute now. <laughs> so, why don't you and Elliot have a nice talk while I fix some more breakfast, huh? Yeah, honey, we'll do that. Come on, Elliot, sit down. We'll have a nice talk, okay? Okay. What do you want to have a nice talk about, Curly? Oh, I don't know. I just thought that... What about girls? <laughs> That's a nice thing to talk about. <laughs> well, I... Go ahead. You start. <laughs> uh, all right. Ain't that Alice a living doll? Don't she look pretty bending over that stove? Yeah. What a stove. <laughs> hey, Elliot, wouldn't you like to have somebody cooking breakfast for you every morning? I got somebody. You have? Sure. Alice. <laughs> I mean, somebody else, you dope. What are you trying to do, Curly? Get rid of Alice? Of course not. <laughs> then what's the pitch? Look, Elliot, I'm trying to tell you. Marriage is a wonderful thing. Now, if a fella's going to get married, I say the only thing to get married to is a wife. You've got something there, Curly. I don't know what you got, but you've got something. <laughs> Elliot, let's sit down. We're sitting down. Well, let's stand up. <laughs> what for? I'm comfortable this way. Keep talking, Curly. You intrigue me. <laughs> Look, Elliot, living the kind of life you do is no good. It ain't? No, it's awful. Now, what do you do every day? You get up any time you feel like it. You go to bed any time you feel like it. If you want to go out with a babe, you go. You got no worries, no responsibilities, no... What's the matter, Curly? How'd you ever get into a mess like that? <laughs> <laughs> Just lucky, I guess. Look, Elliot, now what can you do in a pool room that you can't do right here in this house? Shoot some pool? Don't care if I do. Why don't we pick up a couple of guys? Wait! <laughs> now, where was I? What was I saying? I ought to get married. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look, just think of it, Elliot. A little house all your own, your own fireplace, your own television set, 
with a built-in bar. And then you come home at night and there's somebody waiting for you. Arms outstretched, lips outstretched. What am I marrying? Are you bangy? <laughs> Shut up. I'm sorry, girl. Go ahead. Okay. Now, don't forget, Elliot. You and your wife won't always be two. Because soon, you'll be three. Or maybe four. And one day, there'll be the patter of little feet. No bodies, huh? <laughs> That's right, no bodies. Just feet. I was only asking you. I'm only telling you. Well, you don't have to get mad. I ain't mad. Sparks always come out of my ears like this. <laughs> okay. Go ahead with the feet bit. I'm trying to tell you, Elliot. You'll hear the patter of little feet. You'll come down to breakfast in your own little kitchen with your own little wife and with her own little hair wrapped up in her own little curlers and her own little face covered with it. Maybe we better skip that part of it. <laughs> of course, it sounds fascinating. But, Elliot, it's a whole brand new kind of life. Don't you realize it's peaceful and calm and quiet? You sit down every morning with the sun shining in the window and, and the birds singing in the trees and your wonderful family gathered all around you. There's a feeling of peace and contentment. Everything's quiet and calm. Hiya, Mom, Pop. Hiya, Uncle Elliot. Good morning, Angel. I can't stop now. I'm late for school. But Alice, I... I grabbed something in a lunchroom. Come on, everybody. See you later. Where was I? Quiet and calm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like I said, Elliot, everything's peaceful and calm. And you get a feeling like you've never had before. Hey, everybody, look out for the grillage crab. Oh, sit down, sir. I'm coming through. Can't be late for football practice. Football practice? She's playing football? Daddy, I'm the coach. Well, Phyllis, I'll eat at the training table, Mom. Goodbye, everybody. Who was that, the kid from left field? <laughs> Alice, it's like I said at the beginning. This thing is hopeless. Good morning, everyone. Oh, good morning, Willie. Well, if it isn't Mrs. Faye's revenge. <laughs> good morning, Elliot and Philip. Wonderful day, isn't it? I liked it. <laughs> Until you came pussyfooting in. Oh, Phil. Well, why can't he just fall down the stairs like Alice and Phyllis and everybody else? Sneaks up and back of you like Indian underwear. <laughs> Philip, I know exactly how you feel toward me. And even though I warned Alice before your marriage as to your low character and limited mentality, I must say, in all fairness, that my opinion of you has never changed. <laughs> well, at least you wait a minute. Now, give me that whole thing again from the beginning, now, never, a little... never, never, no, never mind, Phil. William has to have his breakfast. No, breakfast today, Pat. Just sign these checks, and I'll get along to the office. Why does she have to sign the checks before breakfast? Well, there are just a few for the gas and the phone and your allowance. Go ahead, honey. You better sign them checks. He's the beginning. <laughs> give me a pen. Hey, Curly, you mean Alice signs the check for your allowance? Yeah. I don't mind, except when Willie takes them off for income tax as a bad debt. <laughs> That burns me up. Alice pays the bills and gives you an allowance, too, huh? The only reason we use Alice's money is to air out the vault. <laughs> it keeps the big bills from mill doing. An allowance? What do you know? Oh, that's fine, Alice. Thank you very much. Well, you're welcome, Willie. A real live allowance. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, dear. Hey, wait a second, Elliot. Listen to this. I didn't hear nothing. That's what I mean. He goes out like that every time, the thing. <laughs> hey, you know, Curly, I've been thinking about what you said. You know, about peace and quiet and the rest of that stuff. I sure have been missing a lot, ain't I? Why, Elliot? A home and a fireplace and <clears throat> kids running around the house like a picket fence. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. See what I told you, Alice? I told you I'd sell him. Okay, Elliot, now all we got to do is to dig you up a wife. What do you got in mind? Well, 
She ought to be a girl. <laughs> I'm with you a hundred proof. Percent. <laughs> a girl. Any particular kind? I see a girl curly... You know what I mean? A real feminine type of girl with a checkbook. <laughs> That's all, huh? I got a pen. Oh, Phil, this is ridiculous. Anybody home? I've brought the groceries. You can't just marry a checkbook. Why not? Curly did. I didn't either. And you quit saying stuff like that or say, help me, I'm going to slug you. Phil. I'll testify against him, Miss Faye. I seen the whole thing. He hit you with every punch in the book. Then he hit you with the book. I didn't do no such thing. <laughs> you pleaded and pleaded, but he only laughed. Yeah. And threw your quivering young buddy into the cedar closet. Cut it out now, will you? Therefore, gentlemen. Jeremy, I'm I... being framed. I tell you, I want a lawyer. Oh, what... Phil, stop it. And you too, Julius. Well, gee, Miss Fay, I was only trying to protect you. What are you doing here so early anyway? You ain't supposed to deliver them groceries for another hour. Oh, I'm taking the afternoon off. Me rich aunt is coming to town. And boy, is she loaded. Curly, I'm way ahead of you. <laughs> hey, Julius, buddy. Keep away. Now, wait a minute, Julius. Now, when you say your aunt is loaded, are you referring to her financial or liquid condition? <laughs> Look, she owns a brewery. A brewery and money? Bingo! <laughs> hey, Ellie. Man, this is the greatest parlay of all times of brewery. <laughs> of little feet running through the mash barrel. <laughs> Checkbooks floating in bourbon. <laughs> Annuities over the rocks. <laughs> what are Jekyll and Hyde talking about, Miss Faye? Oh, uh, <laughs> nothing, Julius. Say, how would you and your aunt like to have dinner with us tonight, huh? Miss Faye! You mean you'd invite poor little insignificant meat to dinner? And bring the brewery. Ah. <laughs> I mean your aunt. I'll be sitting at the same table with lovely, adorable Miss Faye. Yeah, yeah. I'll be drinking soup that her precious lips puckered to cool off. Yeah, Julius. I'll be eating a flounder she filleted with her own little hands. Julius. I'll be eating a souffle she souffled just for me. <laughs> down, Rob. Get down now. What have I done to deserve this? What have I done? <laughs> well, that takes care of that. She'll be here for dinner, Elliot. Yeah, but what are we do until dinner? That's easy. We'll play an RCA Victor record. You mean until tonight? Look, Elliot, when RCA Victor makes a 45 extended play record, they don't fool around. <laughs> they really extend it. It extends from breakfast clear through to dinner. I'll show you. Put it on, honey. All right. Here goes. Bye bye, babe, bye bye. Sorry, we must fly. Bye bye, bye, baby. Remember, you're my baby. When they give you the eye, and just to show that I care, I will write and declare that I'm on the loose, but I'll stay on the square. I'll be lonely, but even though I'm lonely, there'll be no other guy, though I'll be gone for a while, I know that I'll be smiling with my baby by and by, bye bye my little baby, bye 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 bye. You write and declare that though on the loose you are still on the square. I'll be lonely, but send that rainbow to me, then my shadows will fly. Though I'll be gone for a while, I know that I'll be smiling with my baby by and by.
the brewmaster in. Where till I get a chair and a whip? Elliot, she ain't gonna be that bad. She's Julius's aunt, ain't she? So what? Now, Elliot, will you please put on the whip? But Curly... The chair will be enough. Well, okay, if you say so. Besides, there's gonna be two of us and only one of her. How do you know? I'm guessing. <laughs> now, go ahead, open the door. Hey, Curly... Open the door, Elliot. Curly... My whole life is flashing before my eyes. Well, when you get to the part to where your arm is long enough, open the door. <laughs> but Curly... Move over, will you? I'll open the door myself. Okay. Go ahead, Curly. I'm ready to meet my fate. Good evening. I'm... Yay! <laughs> Hello, boys. I'm Julius's aunt. You can close the door now. I'm in. Close the door, Curly. She might get out. <laughs> wow. Well, it's... Uh, uh, it's... <laughs> sure a nice night for closing them doors. Eh? <laughs> it's a, a beautiful night. Gorgeous. <laughs> What's your friend doing with a chair? He's, uh, he's, uh, he's, oh, he always carries a chair around like that. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, 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 uh, uh. <laughs> Would you like to sit down, Julius and Zane? You can call me Clara. Clara. Gee, that's a beautiful name. Clara. I used to know a Clara. Well, at least she was a cigar. have a rapper like yours. <laughs> He's quite a card, ain't he, Claire? <laughs> hey, by the way, where's Julius? Didn't he come? Oh, yes. He's, uh, parking the car. He's what? Parking the truck. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a bit of life, you know. <laughs> well, uh, we, I think this is the last time we're going to be on, so we might as well just carry this on. <laughs> well, now, let me see. Where were we, old buddy? <laughs> But where were you? <laughs> He's parking the truck, huh? 
<laughs> well, we'd better go out and see him, huh, Elliot? Well, I want to see that little creep for Will you stop? <laughs> Oh, pay no attention to him, Claire. Look, honey, why don't you go into the living room and make yourself comfortable? And me and Ellie have got some business with Julius, huh? Come on, uh, lover. Okay, if you say so. And don't go too far, boys. I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> We'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Bye, Clara. Hey, Curly. Huh? I can't believe it. Oh, money and a brewery and what a built. <laughs> what about Julius? I like Clara's built better. <laughs> Listen to me. Don't you realize now, if we don't keep Julius out of here, he's liable to queer the whole deal. He wouldn't. Why wouldn't he? I guess he would. What we do, Curly? Don't worry about him. I got him all fixed. Yeah? Come on. Right. You know, I didn't think he'd fit in the mailbox. <laughs> oh, sure. You put him in sideways. Huh? <laughs> hey. Hmm? You better come on now. Now we got the business. Let's get going. Where? Are you kidding? No. Where? Where? Clara. The body. Your little bride. She's sitting in the living room. Hey, Curly, what if she says no? She can't say no. Alice would kill me. But Curly... Hold she... it, Rob. Now, come on. Just let me do the talking. Just lay there. Yeah. Um. Hey, Claire. How's every little thing? You have a charming place, Mr. Harris. Just charm. Place? You call this a place? This ain't nothing. You ought to see Elliot's dive at the dump. I mean, <laughs> where Elliot lives. Right, Elliot? Right. He's got a place that's really a place, Clara. Hot and cold running doorknobs, wall-to-wall <laughs> floors, and on a clear day, Catalina can see him. <laughs> right? Right. Clara? Yes, Elliot. Let's next. Wait a <laughs> Come over here a minute, will you? I want to talk to you. Excuse us just a minute, will you, Clara? What are you craving or something? What do you want to do? Quit the whole deal? Why? What do I do? You can't jump at these things. You got to lead up to them kind of gradual. That's just what I did. Well, go slower. <laughs> talk about something else first. Okay. Clara? Yes, Elliot. What do you think of the Brooklyn Dodgers? <laughs> oh, I think they're wonderful. What's next? Elliot! <laughs> Still too fast? Certainly it's too fast. You know something, Clara? You got... What's the matter with you guys? You crazy or something? Hey, wait a minute. Didn't you ever hear of doors? Who needs doors? They stuck me in a mailbox and now I gotta use doors yet. Wait a minute, look. You want no, I don't want to know how you got out. Well, I'm going to tell you how I got out. No stamps. <laughs> Clara, will you excuse us for just a minute, please? Wait, I tell me father what you've done. Just wait. You know what I'm going to tell me father? He'll have you thrown in jail for the rest of your life. That's what I'm going to tell me father. Come on, Elliot. Let's get him out of here. What do you want to do? Stuff me in a in a truck, you axe murderers, yeah. Alice, Elliot, take care of him, will you? You fiends and fiends clubbed you. It's a rude day you ever laid eyes on me. That's what you're so rude. 
I got him, Curly. You do, Rhoda. Now you have a way to bimble. Okay, take your hand off his mouth, Elliot. Okay. I'll be a lily white body, and when I tell a DA what you do, let him talk, Elliot. You mean all night? He'll run down. Okay. He'll have you electrocuted for life. Are you finished? Both he is. Now I'm finished. Look, Julius, you got us all wrong. We want to be your friends. Yeah, like a cat wants to be friends with a mouse. Keep still, you little rat. Elliot, please. Oh, sure, he wants to be my friend. Listen to him. Look, he wants to be more than a friend to you, kid. He wants to be your uncle. He wants to be my uncle? Him? What's the matter with that? He's in love, Julius. He worships the very hops your aunt walks on. <laughs> and he'll make her a good husband, wouldn't you, Elliot? I would devote my entire allowance to making her happy. Oh, I see. Well, maybe I was wrong. There you are, Elliot. Julius is a good kid at heart. Yeah. Maybe we can make a deal. How about 50-50? 50-50? Julius, do you mean to say you'd take 50% of your Uncle Elliot's allowance? You'd stoop to a low, miserable, conniving trick like that? Would you? <laughs> you know, when you get right down to it, Elliot, it ain't a bad deal. <laughs> well, okay, Curly, if you say so. Now, how's about a small retainer? You know, a little token of good faith that you're going to jip me in. This kid's got no soul. Well, do I get it or do I go in and squeal to me Aunt Clara like the dirty little rat that I am? <laughs> Julius, as you grow older, you'll learn that the love of money is the root of all evil. We'll be relatives, you and I, bound by the blessed ties of matrimony. Would you sully that kinship by this low display of avarice, this mean attempt at extortion? I'll take your gold up, stoop, and your fountain pen. <laughs> Julius, how can you be so mean? I take shots. <laughs> <laughs> Give him the elk's tooth, Elliot. But it was my mother. She don't need it. Let her gum her away. <laughs> okay. Here, you little crumb. Wear it in bad health. What do you know? I'm an elk. Okay, Elliot, get going. Clara's waiting. Hey, I'm going to sweep her off her feet. I'll make that John Alden character look like a bum. Good luck. <laughs> oh, Harris, you're a doll. A living doll. <laughs> What's so funny, Mr. Harris? Hey, Julius, you got to hand it to me. I put it over like a dream. Elliot's going to get married, and then I can mooch my breakfast in his house. <laughs> oh, Harris, you're a genius. A living genius. Hey, Mr. Harris, you know how Aunt Claire is me aunt? She's married to me father's brother. <laughs> what does that make you? Oh, Harris, you're a dead duck. Oh. Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. Your mealtime problem, like that of most homemakers, is to come up with new menus for your family to take the humdrum routine out of three meals every day. An RC8 estate gas or electric range will solve your problem. See how the new RCA estate coaxes exciting new flavors from familiar foods with new modern cooking methods. Before you buy, see all the years ahead features of the RCA estate range. It grills, bakes, barbecues, and does it all at the same time. Look up your RCA estate dealer in the yellow pages of your phone book. Let him show you these new RCA estate ranges, gas or electric. This is Phil again. It's sure nice being back with you folks again. And oh, by the way, here's a little dope on our new time. From now on, Fridays is the H and H night on NBC, with our show following that great guy, Bob Hope. So tell everybody you meet that from now on, where there's hope, there's Harris on Friday nights. <laughs> Honey, say good night. Good night, everybody. Stop padding your part. Good night, everybody. <laughs> In this program transcribed was Jacqueline Fontaine. The part of Julius was played by Walter Tetley.
This has been an NBC Radio Network production.